Hello everybody, you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Uh, it's still not <laughs> the, the, the looping thing, because now I'm preoccupied with actually trying to loop. Actually, I'm actually trying to still farm the event myself, and I haven't actually had time to think up of any other things. But anyway, that's not why I'm here. I'm here today because uh, they announced finally when the uh, Melusane banner is going to come up with part 4. And along with that, they included another banner that was uh, exclusive to NA. So I'm going to be talking about that banner because I didn't think about the idea that they would add Leonardo da Vinci somewhere near the end. Now, funny enough, I think, so, I, think I saw someone point out that... Uh, <laughs> Now, every 5-star from Lost Belt 6 has gotten a banner on NA, except for Muramasa. He's the only one that has not received a banner, a new banner that was not previously in Japan. So, you know, look we're really forward to the new year. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't know what's going to happen. But it is a little funny that he's the only one on there when people would 100% drop everything to summon for him now if he were to show up. But anyway, I digress. So I'm going to be talking about this banner, so let's go over it real quick. So, uh, first things first, the actual start date for the uh, event yourself, now that we actually know it, I may as well just say it, is going to be on the 17th. Uh, this banner is going to go last until the 31st, which is what it did on Japan. For this banner, though, for Leonardo da Vinci, she's only going to be here until the 21st. So something to keep in mind. And the other two units that are going to be featured on it are going to be Bargast and uh, Trico over here. And that's going to be the three banners on it. That means that they're also going to be... Uh, it's going to be a split. So if you're looking specifically for... There's going to be no split. So if you're looking specifically for one of the four stars here and you're looking for only one of them over both of them, this is great if you want both of them. But if you're only interested in Bargast or you're only interested in Trico over here instead there's a good chance you'll lose the 50-50 and you'll get one or the other, assuming it happens. Though, to be honest, they both get rerun so much that it's fine. You will eventually get them at some point. Let's go over the units. I can now switch over here. I'll go over them pretty quickly because they're four stars and I shouldn't go too crazy deep into four stars. We have Bargast. And Bargus is a saber. She is a buster gorilla, as you can see from her kit, with three busters, one quick and one arts. Uh, and her kit is 100% focused on... She's an AoE unit, but her main focus and the best thing about her... She's unfortunately, the way that she's an AoE, the way that she gets it back, I think it's kind of a pain. I've been trying very hard to actually loop with her, and it's a little bit difficult because her NP is on a delayed reaction, and you get it back every... It's only 15%, and it's also a cooldown of 7 so it's not the reason that she has kind of high um uh cooldowns because you can see here it's a seven it's a six that's actually decent and that's a five maybe i'm just wrong but this <laughs> specifically the one that matters the most the mp charger is seven and the reason is is that because this skill right here actually reduces the skill cooldown by one as you use it so it's actually a little bit less than that after you NP for the first time, but it's enough that it's kind of annoying to actually use it. So in terms of looping, she's not the best when it comes to Saber. You can definitely do it. You can figure out a way and you can force it through. <laughs> not saying that it's impossible. You just have to do some funny team building to get it done. But what she actually excels at is specifically one, uh, one mode in the game called Grailfront where it's a lot of single unit battles and in that mode specifically her kit's amazing for it she can survive super easily and she can take out a bunch of dudes super easy as well she ends she ends up becoming an mvp in that one i use her all the time for that i don't use her for um farming at all i never use her for that I, if she's ever on the farm team she's usually in the back just getting um bond points and that's it but she is great when it comes to those type of fights where all you need to do is survive it and she's amazing at actually surviving because you can see here that's when a lot of her kit starts to make a lot more sense with the ability to like heal herself remove buffs and do stuff like that um i think she's also another one of these units that doesn't have yeah unfortunately unlike gawain who actually has it she doesn't have the ability to bring forth the sunlight battlefield which kind of sucks but either way uh, for Grailfront, she ends up being amazing for that. And I think for some people, I funny enough, every time the Grailfront comes in, every time I've ever done a video on the Grailfront, it's filled with one of two comments. <laughs> one of these two comments always show up. It is, 
oh man, I love the girlfriend. I can't wait to go for it. And the other one is a person going, I hate the girlfriend. <laughs> it's the worst of, it's the worst mode in the entire game. Uh, and I'm definitely someone who falls into the, I like it, but I'm also someone who has a very large box with everyone awakened in it. And this gives me a chance to use a unit like Vargas where um, typically she wouldn't shine in the most, uh, the most common way to use an AOE unit, which is farming. But in that mode, she's amazing. But anyway, that's Vargas. She's also Vargas, so that's a reason you should have her. I have mine at level 100 at the moment, I think. I, I think I'm still debating about going for higher, but I think I want to get Quetz to actually 120 before I commit to any one other unit. But I love Bargast. Who doesn't? Except for probably haters and some other people from the Lost Belt 6 story, maybe. Anyway, that's Bargast. Uh, next, we got Trico over here. I don't know why she's called Trico. Or Toriko. Oh, that's why. Why? No, I call her Trico to mess with a friend. Never mind. So anyway, that's Trico or Babo Sif or Babo Hans. I do not know how to. Pr I just at this point, I'm almost positive I just mess up her name to mess with my friend, and I've never realized it. Uh, but anyway, Babo Sif, uh, Torico or Trico, whatever you want to call her. She is an archer. She's too quick to arts one buster, and I believe she's a single target focus for quick. And she ends up being pretty good at doing that. She's kind of like. Uh, actual Tristan, which is funny because she's the Fairy Knight or Tom Lin version of Tristan, but she's very similar in that kind of regard. She has the ability to grant herself an invincibility for one turn, and then she gets it a bonus party evasion to everyone, uh, which is pretty nice, which is similar to what Tristan does, but Tristan only gives, I think, party evasion to the entire team. He doesn't give himself invincibility, which, by the way, the invincibility will trigger first, so you will get to keep this evade if it's on there. If you actually fight her, you'll know that. But a lot of her other kit is just, like, seal all enemies. This is for challenge quest type of stuff. And I think there are likely better challenge quest type archers in the game. But that being said, you can easily use her, and it can come into, uh... You'll have a good time and she'll be useful in those challenge quest stuff. And I think that's a perfectly good unit. And she also is being quick, so that means you'll get a plenty of quick stars from it as well. So, cool unit. If you are someone who is a fan of her, and I think almost everyone is a fan of the Lost Belt 6 units, it'll be perfect. Alright, now let's go into the actual 5 star, which is Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, she is a writer. She has one quick, two arts, two buster. Uh, her first skill is the Golden Rule Body EX. Grants self the debuff immunity for three turns, recovers zone HP every turn for three turns, charges zone MP gauge every turn for three turns, HP regen is 1000, and the NP regen is 20%, and that's a cooldown of six. Her second skill is the Excel turn B, grants self evasion for one attack, increase own critical damage for one turn, crit damage up is 50%, and it's a skill cooldown of four. And then the Dream Upon the Stars D increases party's MP damage for 3 turns and charges party's MP gauge by 10% and then overcharges party's MP by 1 stage for 1 turn. MP damage 30%. Cooldown is 5. Uh, her passive skills are Writing B, Territory Creation C, and Overhaul E. Her append skill for the third, <coughs> for the third one is an Anti-Alter Ego Damage Aptitude. Damage Aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is the Rank B... Anti-barrier, the beautiful journey, the one who is beyond the border. Hits three times per hit percentage, deals damage to all enemies, charges party's MP gauge by 20%. At MP level 1, she's dealing 450% damage, and at level 5, it's seven, uh, 750%. And then her overcharge effect is an increase to arts performance for one turn. This activates first. Um, it's 20% at charge level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it is 40%. And that is Leonardo da Vinci. And she's an insanely good writer. I think in terms of, funny enough, there's a lot of really good arts writers in the game, but I think she ends up being the one I like to use the most, which is a real shame that I do not have her. I only have her on the JP version of the game, which makes me so sad that I've never been able to get her on the NA side of the game, but I absolutely love using her. Um, the reason being is that she has so much versatility in her kit, specifically this move right here, the increased party's MP damage and then a ch an MP charger and an overcharge. This overcharge ends up being really nice. Um, when it comes to arts specifically, it's very easy to kind of get overcharged because your main uh, person for arts, at least on the NA side, who is your support, 
It's typically going to either be Tomomo or it's going to be Castoria. Um, most of the time it's going to be a double Castoria, but sometimes some people can't afford Castoria in this economy. So they make do with Tomomo. And both of them have a kits that have arts in them, and it makes it very easy for you to get triple arts. Uh, da Vinci herself, it's very easy for her to get um, herself to 100% NP gauge. The reason being is that she's already charging the party's MP gauge, and that includes her by 20%. So that means that when she starts the MP, even though she goes to 100%, you would at least know she's going to start at 20% for next. And if you're hitting all three enemies with the uh, the buffs from Castoria, and even likely if you only had double Tomomo, she was going to be able to get 100% under lease, unless the circumstances were just not there to make it for whatever reason. But she'll also be able to charge up the other two, uh, the other's MP gauge. So if you take double Castoria, for example, both of them have a 30% skill. So if you use both of those, that means both Castorias are getting 60%. So that would mean that no matter what, on the final turn, you would have both of their MPs ready. But even then, it's very likely and very, um, depending on how you're using your command codes, because there's so much art, arts cards in general, it's possible to get Castoria by level, uh, by the second level and make it so you can start shooting off your MP at that point. And then at that point, you can just use this NP level and then increase overcharge their party's NP gauge. So even though this would give her, for example, the overcharge party's NP by one stage, um, that would give her 25%. But even if you include Castoria with it going first, it would then bump it up to here, which would give it 30% arts. It's just something to kind of take in take mind. And then obviously it also kind of changes. The reason I also really... All units that have this overcharge I think are fun to mess with. Because messing with overcharge results in really funny things for certain classes. Let me just pull up Castoria at this point. Because Castoria is just so important to everything that I mention here. That it's, it helps if you actually look at the overcharge for Castoria. Where the hell are you, Castoria? There you are. There you go. Uh, so example, this one is the best. This is why I also like using her. Even for challenge fights, if they're put together. I Like, when I was doing Lost Belt 6 stories and they were just like, use Da Vinci and use Artoria. I was like, oh, that's easy. This is the easiest thing ever. Because this ability for her to give overcharge makes it very easy for you to get the anti-purge defense stack. So if you use this with the Da Vinci NP... Uh, and the skill. So let's assume you use the skill, you put this first, that means you would start at 2 due to the Vinci skill, and then you would go to 3. So that means you'd have a 300% charge and you'd get anti-purge defense by 3. But if you actually wanted it so that you wanted more anti-purge defense stack just because this prevents so much damage, you can actually make it so that Castoria goes second. You sacrifice some damage, but you get so many more anti-purge defense because it works with the overcharge here. Uh, let me see what you get from Tamamo. I think Tamamo is just a heal. If you look at Tamamo and her specific dealio. No, she actually charges the party's NP gauge after she uses her, uh, Noble Phantasm, which I never realized. <laughs> so if you do it with, um, Da Vinci, if you do it here, you, it's possible to get 31% back from the NP after using it. So if you use that with Da Vinci over here, that would mean that you would start off with 50%, 51% NP charge before you even start dealing damage and getting stuff back. It's fun. That For that reason alone, I think there likely are um, better units who are good at like getting uh, NP gauge. Like for example, the... Uh, Summer Mo. She's very, very good at doing that. And there's others that are probably better at getting damage, I think, for farming purposes. I know a lot of people like using Happy Cat uh, because of her 80% charge skill and stuff like that. But I don't know. I think I have a lot of fun using Da Vinci, and I think of a lot of fun ways to actually use her with a bunch of units I can think of the game. Like, I've never... Like, there was a time where I was using her with... When I was on my Japan account, I was using her with... Um, Voyager and doing a lot of silly stuff right there, going back and forth, just double AOE spamming <laughs> between Quick and Arts with one Castoria there just for help. It was real fun times. It's a little the, the shame about having such a built account is that sometimes you forget about the little silly team building stuff that you can do in the game. It doesn't always have to be the 100% perfect farm machine. Sometimes you can just goof off and have fun. But that's anyway, that's Da Vinci. I think she's a really good solid unit. Obviously, if you're going if you're torn between Melusane and her, the answer is Melusane. Melusane is very good. But at the same time, it's a shame that um I really wish they weren't together because I would have easily thrown it for some for Da Vinci if Melusane was not literally being released 
at this before her or around the same time, I think. Let me see when this actually starts. This starts on the... Oh, it starts now. I didn't even realize it started now. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. I didn't even realize that it started now. I should check the summoning screen. I should not check the summoning screen because I would just summon for Da Vinci if I saw her there. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. I gotta go back to farming uh, for Lotto before time runs out, because, oh god. Until next time, best of luck. I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, oh, I guess also remember to leave a like and comment. That helps the channel a whole bunch, and the channel's been growing by a really steady pace due to all that, so I thank you guys very much. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace out!